Hi guys, just want to do a quick review of the Formbot uh, kit for the Voron 2.4 because I've seen a lot of people asking me. Um, so it's been really good. Uh, I'll talk about some of the issues. I've uh, also some of the issues that you will run into. But as far as the kit, it comes with um, all the wiring. It's labeled well. Uh, all the stuff you will need, except for like a soldering iron, um, some extra stuff. You might have to solder a few wires. Uh, you might need some um, heat shrinks, uh, hot hot gun, hot no no heat gun, and uh, wire cutters and whatnot. Um, so everything's been good. The panel's been good. The back panel's been good. The only panel that's actually not good is the bottom panel. It started s slightly warping. So I put an, I print out some extra uh, Z belt covers and I put it there because it's sort of warping up and that seems to have sort of fixed the problem so so far. Um, also, I installed a Nevermore filter uh, that got rid of all that ABS smell. Uh, this is really built for an ABS. It's an ABS printer or high temp uh, stuff like if you want to print out um, some uh, nylon or whatnot. The rail's been really good. Uh, I'm getting very good speeds with it. The, the Moose motor's been good. I'm running at 1.4 amps. Um, I'm getting very very good speeds and as you can see and this is stock kit and also I'm, I'm not even using a really good hot end I'm just using Dragon uh, standard flow um, they do have options for e E3D E3D yeah the V6 I would not recommend that that's like really for like lower tier printers like slower printers like Prusa um, definitely recommend the Dragon standard flow at least and I would actually go with the high flows. So my new printer that I order from Formbot, it's gonna have that. Um, as far as the parts, make sure you have an ABS. A lot of people try to print with uh, Pet G or have questions. I was gonna do that. I actually replaced the whole parts with ABS because the problem is this printer is designed for ABS. And with Pet G, um, even not without running the printer, you'll notice there's too much flex and when you have too much effects, you're going to get um, not as precise prints for this particular printer. Um, now also temperature, if you're going to print anything ABS, if you're going to use it as open, that's fine. But if you're going to print anything like ABS, um, your internal temperature is going to reach like 50 degrees Celsius or more or 60, some people. Um, which means with PETG, it's going to pretty much melt down while you're printing. You're going to have maybe print like two or three times and then that's it. Uh, then you'll have to rebuild your printer. Uh, if you don't have a printer, just get the Pay It Forward program. It's like 100 bucks all over the world, a little bit more than 100 It's definitely worth it um, if you don't have a printer. That way you get it, set, get it set right. That if you print an ABS, I've been printing ABS for weeks, no problems whatsoever. Um, and the ABS stuff, I was not, I was not printing, building this printer for ABS. I built it for a TPU. And then I, I had I was printing using a PETG for my electric skateboard uh, hubs here, and I test them out. And the impact resistance of ABS so much better than PETG, um, and ABS is cheaper. And this is definitely an ABS machine, and I'm just I'm just loving ABS now. And uh, again, you can use the Nevermore filter, which pretty much gets rid of all the smell. 99% uh, of the VOCs. You still have, need a HEPA filter. I got a little HEPA filter over there, just sort of cleans. I actually have a bunch of them in my office. Uh, but I'm gonna put this in my other room where I'm not around anyways, um, because you know I don't need to be around the printer, but it's so much fun just watching this printer. So yeah, the only problem I had was the bottom panel sort of warping a little bit, which doesn't affect your prints. Um, but um, also another thing was the mag magnets that came with this thing that wasn't working good. Uh, it's better to install these these clip-ons. Everyone's using these these days, anyways. Um, also, whenever I want to work on my printer, I just snap these out, and I can pull the panels off real easy. Uh, the ZN stop is useless. I would not use it. You'll just have problems. It's it's not the kit, but the Voron design. I don't know why they wanted to use the the Z offset, but you know the problem is, if you want to use that, you'll need something to clean your nozzle. Um, so all these people are installing these nozzle cleaners and then and then you have to modify your G-code or your print macro and 
it's just too much work. I went on Facebook and somebody said, oh, just use the Omron's, um, your Z probe as a uh, virtual Z and um, Z and stop. And then after that, I get perfect layers. Um, no melting of my Omron probe. It's working fine, flawless. I just recently added the thermistor. That's what was my previous video. Uh, that gets the temperature, reads the temperature of the enclosure. So my printer waits uh, for the enclosure to reach 30 degrees, for example, or 39. Right now it's at 37. And then it will do quad gantry, it will do the probing, uh, which means you get exact temperature readings every single time. Uh, with Z probe and that's, you don't, you don't need to do extra stuff. Uh, I guess you can get, you know, a lot of people are moving to tap and uh, clicky or whatever. I guess it gave you like 0 .0001 like uh, accuracy, but I'm getting, you know, I'm getting 0 .003 to 0 .007 tolerance, which is more than good enough. Um, so I feel like sometimes people try to over-engineer their printer. <laughs> um, so you can do that, but you know, I just don't see the need for right now because everything's working. And yeah, the hot end is, I've been able to reach with PETG volumetric rate of around like 20, maybe 25. Um, so th this is a Dragon standard flow. So I do highly recommend the high flow. That's gonna be one of your limitations. Or if you want, you can go uh, Rapido, uh, Fetus Rapido, I got on my rat rig, which comes as default and um, that can push like 40, 50. Uh, at that, those volumetric rates, you're, Printer is gonna reach its maximum speed, and it's going pretty fast at the moment. So I, I just don't really see the need to go faster, but I, I will slowly, eventually go faster because my previous videos it was like way slower than this. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna go faster, and I keep going faster, and the printer can, can keep up. So I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so amazed. Um, another reason, you know, there's like stuff like bamboo lights. Why would I? You get this one. It's almost, you know, half the cost. I mean, uh, this is what, 800 with, with the standard flow, a little bit over 800. And then bamboo was, is the, the, the enclosure was 1500. I guess, you know, it's, you can do that if, if you don't want to mess with your printer, but I, I'm just all into this open source. I love Raspberry Pi. I'm into open source stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm going this route. Plus I don't need like color changing stuff. I might, add ERCF anyways on this um, so yeah it's a choices but if you have, if, if you have the time to build one and you know you want to you want to you want to be budget friendly I would definitely go with the Voron uh, think about it it's cheaper than a assembled it's, it's about the same price as a Prusa MK3S <laughs> compared to that this this is like a five times better printer that can print five times faster it's like you can print you know five things on your Prusa MK3S Plus, and then you know you can print five times more. You'll have 25 more things, and the bed is way way bigger. So a lot of advantages. If you're gonna build a Prusa, anyways, you might as well build a Voron. Um, the difficulty level of building a Voron maybe twice more. It'll take you twice more. But if you prepare, um, I do have video tutorials. If you follow that, that should help. Um, also, another thing about. Voron in general, the software is a little DIY, so if you don't know about software, but I'm going to cover all that stuff. Um, I'm up to that point. I just installed the flying gantry on the my tutorials. I'm on step eight that I'm making. So I have a bunch of stuff, uh, tutorials, so you can get from zero to 100 with the FormBot kit or, and, you know, all the other kits are similar. I also have a five step kit. And I'm gonna pick up a LDO kit eventually to to test it out. Uh, but I, you know, I'm thinking about budget too. I'm, you know, this is gonna be for my business, so I need to, you know, get the most budget friendly printer that's the fastest, most cost efficient. And so far, I haven't had zero problems with the uh, Formbot kit. So I highly recommend it. Um, it's a good kit, good motors, good rails. The important things are there. And yeah, I'll have updates if I ever have any bigger problems. But with with the afterburner, uh, it's working fast, and I'm sure you can go even faster um, if you, if you're gonna do now. If you're gonna do materials like PLA, I hear the you know fans not that great, enclosures not that great. You might just leave it open. Uh, if you're gonna go PLA route, then I might go with another print printer. 
But I don't print PLA. I just have no use for PLA because you know most of my application need to stand up to UV rays, like you know, or, or at least a moderate temperature PLA just melts everything. So I usually print PETCHI, TPU, and now ABS. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Sorry, the review got kind of long. But yeah, highly recommend this kit. It's a fun build. It's like building Legos. It, but it might take you a while to get it up and running, just telling you. Give yourself a nice, you know, maybe an hour a day, maybe nice two weeks to build it the first time. A second time should be much easier, but yeah. After I built it, I, I'm really proud of myself and just, just fun. Just fun watching this printer just <laughs> printing stuff. Have a great day, guys.